Dancers on the Five Show tonight, actress Eun Shuan talks about self-esteem and body issues. Dolls, dolls, and more dolls. Would you live in a house full of bees? And what's gotten Grammy-nominated singer Jessie J so surprised? Find out next. I'm Anne Lai. And I'm Yasmin with you. And I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. And thank you for joining us for Monday's edition of The Five Show. International Women's Day was yesterday, and the theme this year is Make It Happen. So we figured who better to feature on tonight's show than women who have made it happen, whether it's in their personal goals, career, or even in their choice of sports. First up, let's meet some women who have pushed gender boundaries in the sports arena. These are ladies who have chosen to go pro in the male-dominated world of MMA or mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts, or MMA, is a full contact combat sport known also as cage fighting or ultimate fighting. It's been described as the fastest growing sport in the world. I've been practicing MMA for a number of years and I really enjoy the intensity and how it keeps me in shape. But have you ever wondered how professional fighters are like? Kirsty Ganaway left her graphic design job to focus full-time on training and MMA as a career. Kirsty is only the fourth Singaporean female fighter to compete professionally in MMA. She recently won a fight at the 1FC Battle of the Lions event. Since I started training martial arts nine years ago, I liked the healthy lifestyle that came with it because it made me feel so much better. Sometimes I found like, although it's graphic designing, it was still a desk job and I found it really mentally and physically exhausting, but um, not in a very positive way. And get the opportunity here to get to train every single day and incorporate uh, healthy living into my lifestyle. I thought that was a really cool opportunity. I'd train two times a day at two hours each, minimum. If I can get uh, six hours in, that would be even better. Martial arts is made up of a lot of components, so it can be a bit intimidating. Uh, but just go for it. Don't be so concerned about the way you look. Trailblazing Kirsty is an inspiration to both women and men. Whether they choose to fight professionally or practice MMA just as a form of fitness training. MMA definitely improves your strength and conditioning. Right now, I feel strong enough to take on just about anyone. <laughs> Maybe not today. So, and Lai, looking at that, do you think you want to go in a cage with the likes of Christy? No. <laughs> I don't think, I think you would lose quite tragically. I would lose just like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. not even like that. It would be like, before you can even snap your fingers, gone. <laughs> She'll snap my fingers, <laughs> literally. Now, if not Christy, what about the second Singaporean female MMA fighter to go pro? Please welcome 1989 Sports Girl of the Year, former Singapore national and Olympic swimmer, May Wee. Hi, May. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming down. Um, is it Dr. May Wee or not, not anymore? You can call me Dr. May Wee. I'm just not going to answer you. Oh. <laughs> so so because, you were a doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you became an MMA fighter. So mm -hmm. how did you embark on this journey? Well, there's a, there's a long story behind it. Um, I finished medicine and I was at Crossroads. I wanted to, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go, you know, spend the rest of my life in a hospital. Um, my passion was in sports, so I really wanted to pursue a life of sports, follow my passion. Um, after swimming, I went into surfing and I started surfing, very passionate about that, still do. Uh, and then I got into capoeira, I opened a gym. Uh, I have the Brazilian Cultural and Sports Center in Singapore where I teach capoeira for kids and adults. And then from then on, I just went to um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, and then when you throw all that together, it's mixed martial arts, MMA. Wow. Well, there you go. It's, it's yeah. a bit of a rojak of sports, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, do you, salad. Do you, do you feel like there is uh, discrimination against women in sports, especially combat, uh, combat sports? Um, I think I've been very lucky. I haven't felt any direct forms of discrimination. Um, as a matter of fact, the men that have been around me, especially the fighters, um, they've been the most supporting people. Very, very supportive in every way. Whether it's training, sparring, you know, 
um, your fights, acknowledging and giving you everything they have to help you get to where you want to be, it's been great. Um, but we've had, I felt like the discrimination actually came from, it's kind of sad to say, but from women, you know? Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard. Like they try to take it away from you sometimes. But what through, do you mean? You know, um, when you win, the men would be over the fence. They'd be like, yeah. yeah, you did it. You know, you got her and you smashed her. It doesn't matter how it went down. It went down and you got it. But what and, did the um, women say? The women would be like, oh, yeah, that was good. And yeah, but she didn't have a ground game or she didn't know how to strike or she didn't know how to. And you just go, all right, thanks a lot. Is it yeah. because they're being competitive? Mm. Are these women who say these, are, are they also in the same sports or are, or are they? Uh, they do from, some form of combat sport. Ah, yeah, okay, so maybe there is a competitive thing different. going on. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I've been very, very lucky. It's, well, with the men, it's just been great. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got really good support from men. Okay, so, well, yeah. we've got in the news today, mm -hmm. um, Salvo Sports, an Indonesian company. They make t-shirts, I think. Mm. Um, let's take a look at the photo and the little tag that they put on. And it says there, Washing instructions, give this jersey to your woman. It's her job. Oh, okay. What are your thoughts on this, May? First, I thought it was like a really funny joke. I mean, okay. like, seriously? I mean, first world, Singapore, you say that to a woman, you're probably going to get like a, what's wrong with you face, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead, <laughs> like, Or a slap really? or a yeah. punch or whatever, a scratch. You're yeah. in a doghouse with the rest of the month, you know? But, um... I suppose this could be applicable in a different country where women are expected to stay at home and um, they're homemakers and it's their job. Um, so you don't see any humor in that? Or, or I what? see humor in that, but obviously I've read like the, the, the social media backlash okay. and there's been a lot of um, people saying, ah, this is humiliating. Yes, you can, it can be taken you know, in that way also. Um, but I choose to see humor in this because it's never going to fly for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, seriously. You're not okay. going to do any washing for yeah. anyone. <laughs> May's husband, you better. You, I, we hope you heard that. <laughs> now I'm like, with that tone, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll take your whites and I don't know how it's going to end up in my reds and I'm going to give back to you and magenta. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Anyway, thank you so much, May, for joining us and all the best for your fights. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you yeah. very much. And watch out for May. Um, she'll be on um, CNA um, as the sports reporter for the coming SEA Games. And also later on, we check out a house that is home to over $9,000 and you won't believe who the homeowner is. Plus, Grammy-nominated uh, singer Jesse J talks to the Five show. Meanwhile, it's over to Jill Newbronner. Tell us about the stories making tonight's news. Jill. Thank you. Now ahead on News 5, some worrying news from Indonesia. 16 of its citizens go missing in Turkey. They were all part of a tour group, but now suspected of joining the Islamic State. At home, a CPF retirement planning service to be launched to help you figure out your best savings options. Plus, another train disruption this evening. A fire stops the Bukit Panjang LRT in its tracks, and service will not be available all night. We'll have the very latest at 9pm. Welcome back to The Five Show. The next video is going to blow your mind. Imagine, imagine what it's like to uh, when your home becomes the ultimate dollhouse. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen. Um, as you can see, I collect dolls. I've been collecting dolls since 1984, when I was about five years old. Right now, I think I have about 6,000 Barbie-type dolls, but about 9,000 dolls as a whole. You can see I've got dolls pretty much everywhere. This is the cupboard in the, in the kitchen. Uh, I thought that was quite funny because she's a Spice Girl, get it? first doll that I owned was Great Shape Barbie 1984 and she's the one that was featured in Toy Story. You know when you're five years old and you don't know what's a boy's toy, what's a girl's toy, what gender stereotypes are, you just sort of lean towards something that you like. In this case, I lean towards a, a doll. Uh, I didn't know it was not for boys, I didn't know it was stereotypically wrong for a boy to play dolls. I got, I got my first one and I guess the rest is history. She's just not the perfect plastic form, but 
everything from careers to ambitions to living the dream life, I think that there's qualities that she can portray. So this is a doll I painted of myself. Uh, what can I say? I think he's handsome, so... <laughs> the only thing I have to say is the fact that at 35, I've got, you know, a house, a career, in a very good relationship. Family loves me, friends love me. I've had no problems, like no bullying, no friends questioning who I am, sexuality, none of that. Something, something worth thinking about when we stereotype what a person should look like, what does a He-Man collector look like, what does a My Little Pony collector look like. It's, I, I think it's not a fair judgement. Um, yeah. Wow, thank you Jen for sharing your collection and happy International Barbie Day. That's right, Barbie is officially 56 years old today and she <gasps> still looks 18. She doesn't look it. No, <laughs> I want to be Barbie. And as much as there are those who love <gasps> her, there are also those who dislike her. You know, some people feel that um, Barbie doll objectifies women and gives young girls the wrong idea of the perfect body image. Well, with us is an actress who made a very honest video about the insecurities she has about how she looks. Please welcome Un Xuan. Hello, Xuan. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So let's talk about the video. Yeah. Uh, recently, it went viral. Yeah. And yeah. it's a great video, and you shared about your insecurities, about uh, how you look. Yeah about plastic surgery. Um, but what was the message that you were trying to uh, send out? Why the video? Okay, I explained the history a little bit. It was actually with a theatre company called Checkpoint Theatre and it was part of a theatre show called Unicorn Moment. And what we wanted to do was create a community online first before the theatre show went on. And we realised during our brainstorming sessions that every time we talked about stuff, when one person shared a story, someone else would end up sharing theirs. And so, actually it started a while ago. I bought a unicorn suit because I wanted to make like videos. Yes, we've seen yes. Yes, your onesies. We all know that. Your unicorn onesies. Because <laughs> I wanted to do like advice videos, you know, things I wish I knew when I was younger, things about like sex education, dating violence, all that kind of stuff. But after going through the process of making that show, I realised that no one actually can tell you how to live your life. It, like, no advice would be for everybody. So all we could try to do was kind of like navigate our lives in as honest a way as possible and share that process with people. And what was really great was when I shared that video, other people started sharing their stories about right. how they felt about themselves right. mm -hmm. and about how they felt about beauty and how they were perceived. Yeah. yeah, and so it was really nice to talk about that because if you think about it, there's no like clear right or wrong, it should be this way, it should be that way. All you can do is kind of like process your feelings about it and think of it in terms of like a larger system right. and then just identify those things and hopefully things shift. And sometimes so, by sharing it, you, you actually feel better and you can actually figure things out better, right? Yeah, yeah in a way, it kind of makes you feel better that you're not alone. Exactly. I actually didn't want to do the videos. I was like, uh -huh. this, is, you know this is too much. I, I love the videos. I like I really it because did. the Thank thing you. is, it's kind of ironic. Um, it's called, what, my five-minute magic routine, hashtag unicorn moment, episode six. <laughs> and Shuen is there putting on makeup. Yeah. while talking about her insecurities. Yeah. And um, so that, that was really nice. And why do you think it's gotten 400,000 views only in this past, uh, past few, few weeks, past few days? Yeah. yeah, I think it's because, I guess it's something that resonates with people. I think this is for guys and girls. This constant message of you need to try harder, you need to be more, you're not quite there, you're not quite good enough. And all these messages that we take in, and we, because like what I realised was, when I was 14, I was not a looker, like, I had no idea how to do my makeup, no idea how to do my hair, but I was so confident. And now, now I'm 29, I know how to do my makeup, I know how to do my hair, I know how to dress and everything. But you're less confident. But I'm less confident. I feel right. you! Yeah, and why is like, that so? Oh, come on, where did it come from? And a lot of guys feel the same way because we're all being like fed these things. And mm -hmm. like for me, makeup's not evil. Like I think the way it's sold can be calibrated. <laughs> well, okay, talking about makeup yeah. and putting on an appearance, yeah. physical appearance, let's yeah. look at these photos that we have of Stephanie Sun. Yeah. Mm. Um, there we go. We have the edited version where uh. she looks um, really nice, you yeah. know, smooth skin, everything. And then there was a backlash. Yeah. Right? And then she put out the real photo. Yeah, mm. and then she admitted that she heavily photoshopped herself. Right. Um, and then she apologised and she posted the one of her real yeah. self. Yeah, so what okay. do you think about it? Interesting. Well, I kind of feel like it's kind of nice to have people say, 
like it, it shows a shift in taste when the consumer wants something that's more natural, yeah. that is more um, that's closer to what we really look like. I think yeah. it's really nice to see that. And also, I think that if you think this. Like, I feel like this is not quite about Stephanie Sun. Like, it's a larger issue. She's the symptom, she's not the cause. And the larger issue is that we're all being told to look a certain way. So as a celebrity, like, we all look at her. Right, and it's right. nice that, you, you know? know, that people are veering more towards the, mm -hmm. the realness of yeah. beauty now. So I don't think she did anything wrong, all right? It's just no, like that. No, not at all. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. A true beauty in Yay. person. And so <laughs> candid too. So up next, we've got Jessie J with some words of wisdom for our viewers. Don't go away. Welcome back. As part of their 35th anniversary, SK2 launched their Change Destiny Museum at the Paragon Atrium. Our five show reporter Carla went to check things out. I love all things fashion and beauty, so when I heard SK2 was having an event, I just had to check it out. So I'm here at the Paragon for SK2's launch of their Change Destiny Museum. Hosted by Belinda Lee, I got to meet Mediacorp personalities Desmond Tan and Aloysius Pang. I journeyed through the five zones where I got to experience a number of cool and funky SK2 innovations. Hi, um, okay, am I gonna have a lot more wrinkles in five years? is younger than my actual age, which totally made my day. <laughs> the highlight, though, was getting a selfie with SK2 global brand ambassador, Korean sensation Kim Hee A. I had an awesome time at the SK2 Change Destiny Museum. Now you've got two more days to check it out, so don't miss it. Bye. Oh yeah, lots of skincare tips to pick up and products to try. And apparently not just for the ladies, for guys as well. Now, the whole breaking of stereotypes and gender equality, I think, you know, we should go both ways, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, how do you go just only one way? You have yeah. to go both ways. Exactly. And um, so I think it's very interesting that um, we're talking about makeup and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. because these things, you know, also apply to guys. Exactly. Because I'm a TV host, I wear makeup too. Very thick makeup. No, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. <laughs> anyway, over the weekend, and Lion High and, and I had a great time. Jesse J performed to a sold-out concert on Saturday night as part of the Singapore Jazz Festival 2015. Despite a jam-packed schedule, the five show managed to talk to her. So let's have a look at this interview. In one of your interviews, I remember you saying that you feel it's hard for women to be successful in the industry. Mm -hmm. Do you actually believe that now? And has anything changed? Um... Yeah, I do think I still believe that now. Um, I think as you get older as a woman, especially for me, going from being 16 when I first started out in this industry to now and I'm nearly 10 years, 11 years on, I still have struggles, but I know how to deal with them better. Um, I know how to fight for my rights in a less emotional way. Um, but I love being a woman. And I, yeah, which is a good thing to say, you know, and, and I've really embraced it as I've got older, so. And this masterpiece, a yes. reflection of you. Oh, it's it, every time I even just hit seeing those, you know, those young kids sing it, every single one of them is singing it in a different way, taking it into themselves personally and, and singing it a different way. And that's for me is what that song's about. Every time I perform it, some people are crying, some people are celebrating, some people are dancing. Um, the lyrics are so 
never ending. Like a, a, a ten year old could sing it and an eighteen year old could sing it and still have the same feeling of what the song's about. So yeah, it was lovely. It was such a nice surprise. Who's your biggest inspiration? My mum. Um, she's taught me to be so many things and understand the layers of myself. She's probably one of the first, if not the first person that's been honest with me about maybe negative parts of me that other people would be scared to say, you need to work on this, even from when I was younger. You know, it's so funny now and people say to me, like, you're so specific and you're so driven and, and you know, and you push people to their limits. My mum's been like that with me and my sisters and raised very independent, confident, very emotional but controlled women and I just, as you get older, I think all of us can probably understand this, is that you really start to understand, like, parents, you just think they're parents and that's it, you know? And then as you get older, you realise, like, 30 years ago, she was me. Not me, but, like, she was young and... Same things, and you just start to go, wow, like, you dedicated your life to me and my sisters and... She's never not been there. Like, she called me and she was like, I'm flying out for your birthday. It's my birthday in like three weeks and I'm going to be working on The Voice in Australia and I don't really want to do anything because I'm working and, you know, and I didn't think anyone would remember and she phoned me and she was like, I'm coming out. And I'm like, Mum, you want to get on a 24-hour flight to come and see me? She's like, obviously, yes. Like, you're my baby. Like, of course I'm going to be there. So there's just... She's just, like, the best woman ever. And if I was a young girl who looks up to Jessie J as a role model, yeah. what would you say to me? Be healthy. Be happy, um, love yourself from the inside out, make a plan, have a list of dreams that you, that you may not achieve, but so you have something to work towards. Um, and just enjoy yourself, you know? Understand that not everything's gonna go your way, um, but just work hard and, and, and do whatever you love to do and try and do that every day. There you have it, Jessie J. She is just, she, she, she's a force of nature. She's just so sincere she in what she's trying to do. She was absolutely amazing and her singing was also amazing, but I think what was really important was showing that girl power. Yeah! Speaking of uh, power or being empowered, tomorrow night, Elvin Ung and Mr. Brown will be here to talk about angry people and the devastating results of not cro uh, controlling their tempers. Thanks to all our guests and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye! Story, come on down to the